We've been doing hydraulic flow with Ken, the man, and now we're going to do it on the 3R, or sort of a 3R, 4R, and a 5E in this episode. We're going to start with Kenton's 4052R. We drove a long way. This 4052R is a superstar. It's been in a lot of TTWT episodes now. Yeah, so. Let's get started. All right, Kenton, so here's what we have. We have your Power Beyond Loop, mm -hmm. which can control and implement like a backhoe or a log splitter right. that has its own valves. So the top line is your pressure. The P there denotes pressure. So yep. you have fluid that's being pumped out of the pump, going into the hydraulic gauge, and it's going through there and then going out and being returned through back the to the system through the other hose, the other side of the loop hose. Yep. This gauge has a temperature, temperature sensor on it because we generally want to run these tests at normal operating temperature okay oh. mm -hmm. and we can we can heat it up pretty good i'll show you how we're going to do oh, that oh we'll put a restriction on yep <laughs> so this is our flow meter in gallons per minute or liters per minute so we, we're graduated in in one pound increments um, and we have a uh, 16 gallon capacity on this machine your machine's rated for 10.2 gallons a minute i wondered okay yep, yep 10.2 so we'll see if we can get there. And then this is a pressure gauge, which is will read the system pressure as we're testing. And this is a loading valve. Uh, so like, with this like valve, a dynamometer, huh? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly right. So this it. valve is, puts the squeeze on it and uh. loads the system up. And you know we can crank it all the way down to nothing. It's completely stopped the flow and will cause the pressure relief valve on the tractor to open up and uh, okay. you know no damage or anything. Yeah, but, yeah. But so we're gonna open this up. We're going to start the tractor, and that should jump right up there. Oh, okay. Um, so there's idle, and we have four gallons a minute. That's fantastic. Oh. Right at four gallons a minute. The little one series can't even get the four at <laughs> full throttle. All right, we'll go to full throttle. So we're actually seeing close to just under 12 gallons a minute. Oh. Make sure I read the specs right. Yeah, we do, because the, the 3R, the 3046R, is 9.1. it down so you can hear the restriction in yeah. there the thousand pounds of pressure We're still holding just under 12 2,000 oh, okay. still holding a little over 11 that's really good oh really good deal so our temperature is creeping up it's about 80 degrees right now so the specs are saying 11.2 for this tractor on the website. Sometimes we do see some discrepancies between the website and the manual. It's about 100 degrees right now. You can feel it. What well, is normal? Oh yeah, oh normal would be about 140, 160. When you're working it really hard, 180. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. But even still, 11.2, we're above that. We're yeah, in. we're at good 12. All right, well, before the weather rolls in, let's get to the front. I'm more curious about what the third SCV flows up front. Yeah, I, uh, yeah. me too. Now we're going to test the third function. We know this machine will run the limb saw. We've got video proving it. <laughs> yes, and very, uh, well, very well. We yeah. have a lot of questions here because these fittings, these quarter-inch couplers, should only support, they're only rated to support 3.5 GPM. That's correct. We know we're getting more than that through them because we ran the limb saw, supposed to require seven. We've also run the limb saw on a 1025R with the Hydros Plus upgrade with yes, the yeah. same size. Oh, so, yeah, so, yeah. so we know there's a, a mix up there somewhere or at least a, a conservative right. spec. We're going to see what we actually get yep. here. So at idle, we're just above two gallons a minute. And there we go, full throttle. I'd say five gallons a minute is what I would say. What's very interesting also is I have the loading valve all the way open right now. All the way open. So we have 2,000 pounds of pressure on the system. So that means we're getting, we're getting parasitic pressure through all these couplers, all the quarter inch fittings. And it's putting 2,000 pounds of pressure on the line. We're still getting five gallons a minute. Um, five and a half gallons a minute. So let's see if we can load it down some. There we go. So it 
drops off very quickly. Drops off extremely quickly. So down to zero right there. That's about our relief pressure, about 2,600 pounds. So somehow the machine runs the limb saw at five gallons a minute. So at the front, because we think because of the quarter inch couplers, we were only able to get five gallons a minute of flow. That's our hypothesis yeah. at this point. <laughs> yeah. Because the tractor's rated for 11.2. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we were seeing almost 12. Right. <laughs> okay, so what we've done is we've disconnected the orange and the green lines. These are the third function lines that connect in to half inch couplers here. And then these snake up the loader, go to those hard lines and end in the quarter inch couplers up the loader. So we've changed our hoses on our gauge. We've got half inch ISO couplers everywhere. So now we're gonna test and see what uh. flow we can get without the quarter inch couplers. And we'll, the interesting thing is gonna be is our parasitic pressure mm -hmm. and our flow. Those are gonna be the two interesting things. Yep. So we're at three gallons a minute with no pressure at all. We had pressure almost instantly before, as I recall. We have no parasitic pressure now. And we're running at 11 gallons a minute. Okay, so by doing this experiment, we have proved that the quarter inch couplers are blocking the flow up to the third function. We were seeing 11 gallons a minute of flow right here through the half inch couplers. So, this works for us and against us, two different ways. It works for us in that if we're operating Kenton's four-in-one bucket or a grapple yeah. or a snowplow blade, the three things that people operate most, um, the item won't move as fast. The implement won't move as fast because it has less flow. These devices have small cylinders on them, and if you, if you pump 11 gallons a minute into a two-by-four cylinder, it's going to go bam and bam, open and closed. So the restriction helps with that. That's why we sell flow restrictors and people put flow restrictors on their implements to slow things down, right. make it more controllable. So that's very helpful for that. And maybe that's why Deer did it. Now, trying to run a limb saw, theoretically shouldn't have worked, but it did. <laughs> but it would work better if that's possible. I saw the video, yeah, it oh. would work better if we change those couplers to half inch couplers. You know, I think it's more than just the couplers. I think the hard lines here are they very well could well. be. They're, they're very small yeah. hard lines. Um, yep. They're maybe, what, 3 eighths outside diameter. So the inside diameter is maybe 7 sixteenths, possibly. Um, so yeah, we could theoretically run hoses up here to, uh, to the limb saw directly, 3 eighths jumper hoses from here up to there. And, and we uh, could run the limb saw or possibly some other motor yeah, operated device. If we device, can get 12 whatever. GPM, we can run something real. Yeah. Yeah, so this oh. was a very interesting experiment. This I, visit's really short this time because we got other tractors we need to test. Really appreciate it, Ken. Hey, I appreciate you guys. It's yes, just sir. It's Ken, been a pleasure, pleasure all the way too, around. Sir. I've learned a lot, too. <laughs> we'll get to the 3 and the 5E now. Today we're going to be doing some hydraulic flow testing on my 2012 John Deere 3720 cab machine. It's got about 280 hours on it. Okay, the tractor's running at idle right now. And looks like we're getting right around two gallons per minute. Our temperature gauge is about 80 degrees right now, but it's, it's uh, take a few minutes for it to read up in the gauge. Our pressure is virtually zero. Okay, 2,000 RPM, and we're holding right around six gallons a minute. And again, we have very little pressure because we haven't loaded it. Start to see the pressure just coming up now. You actually may be able to hear it a little bit. So we're about 1,500 pounds right now, and holding just under six gallons a minute. Again, we're at 2,000 RPM on the tractor. About 2,000 pounds, and our flow staying steady. Our temperature gauge is almost about 100 right now. Now we're at PTO RPM, which on this machine is about 2,600. Again, this is a John Deere 3720, which is a turbocharged, intercooled, 43 horsepower diesel. We're holding pretty steady at eight gallons a minute. 
have a little bit of flow there, maybe, or a little bit of pressure, maybe 500 pounds. Go ahead and load it up. About 1,000 pounds right there. Didn't affect the flow much. 1,500 pounds, the flow's still holding steady. 2,000 pounds, still holding right around eight gallons a minute. Now above 2,000 PSI, you can see, 2000 again that our flow really starts to drop off. So now we're down to four gallons a minute. I'm only at about 2200 pounds. We'll go ahead and pretty much block it off. We can get down to zero flow. Right now the pressure relief valve should be open on the tractor. So that's obviously not what we want to do. I went to full throttle, which is about 3,000 RPM on this. So now we're getting about nine gallons a minute on the gauge. And I'll go ahead and load it up again. 1,000 pounds. Oops, just jumped up there. 1,500 pounds. 2,000 pounds. And again, above 2,000 pounds of pressure, our flow starts to drop off. So we can get about eight gallons a minute right there, about 2,200 pounds. There's four gallons a minute at about 2,400 pounds. That's probably, we wouldn't be able to get much more than that. We restrict the flow too much, it wouldn't be very useful to us. So here I've got the loading valve completely open. We're running nine gallons a minute. You still see there's a little bit of pressure on the system. That's called parasitic pressure. That's just the pressure of the fluid um, the resistance of the fluid moving through the lines and the fittings and the gauges. It's getting pretty warm now. About 125, 130 degrees. Okay, so here's our setup. Flow gauge hooked to the third function. Gonna go ahead and start the tractor. And I'm gonna do the same test we did before on the Power Beyond. So we're gonna activate the third function. Okay, and now we see just a little bit less flow. We're probably about one and, a, uh, one and three quarters gallons per minute. Uh, again, this is at idle, so we're going to go ahead and bump it up to 2,000 RPM. And we're going to go ahead and load it down. All right, we're running four gallons a minute, steady at four gallons a minute. And what's interesting this time is that we're seeing a thousand pounds of pressure on it even though the loading valve is completely open. I guess that's because of the restriction of the quarter inch coupler. So I'll go ahead and load it up a little bit more. Come on, there we go. So we're about 2,000 pounds of pressure, and it really killed our flow. We're down to just above one gallon a minute. That's, uh, wow, hardly usable at all. So we're at PTO RPM now. We're still seeing our 1,000 pounds of parasitic pressure. We're just above four gallons a minute, maybe four and a half, and probably five, I would say. And we'll go ahead and load it down. Uh, two gallons a minute flow. So the uh, loading it down has a dramatic effect through the third function here, I guess, with all the restrictions in line. We'll load it a little bit more. Yeah, 2,500, I don't see any flow at all. All right, full RPM now. Getting about inching up to five gallons a minute, just under five gallons a minute. Not as much as I was hoping. And we'll see how loading it affects it this time. And again, it's very dramatic. A little bit more pressure and the flow really knocks down. Certainly not as much flow as I had hoped from the, uh, from the front third function. I guess I could try uh, plumbing everything in 3 8 hoses and half inch couplers to see if I could increase that flow and I probably could. Um, I don't exactly know what the flow is from the third function. Uh, actually we can test that. I will change out the hoses and we'll, we'll plug in directly to the third function in the rear of the tractor and see what kind of flow we can get directly through that third function. And we're going to hook right into these ports right here, these two. That's the third function outlet. We have our third function diverter kit here installed on this machine. So these two hoses here, our A1, B2 side, go up to the third function on the loader to run our grapple. 
whereas the uh, A1B1 circuit, these come down to our, our uh, fit right hydraulics hydraulic top link that we have. So I'm going to unplug the diverter. I'm going to take the diverter out of the circuit to get rid of all restrictions and I'm going to plug directly in here. Uh, while I was changing everything out, I went in and checked the specs on the tractor from the, uh, the John Deere technical manual and the tractor is rated for 8.6 gallons a minute total flow for, on the implement circuit. That does not count the steering circuit. This machine has two separate pumps. Okay, we're all hooked up now. The tractor's idling. We're going to activate the third SCV right around two gallons a minute right now. We're going to go ahead and bump up the throttle to 2,000 RPM. Okay, right around four gallons a minute. Which is pretty much what we were getting uh, before when we were directed to the power beyond. All right, uh, six gallons a minute right now. We'll try loading it up. 2,000 pounds, holding about five and a quarter. Okay, a little over 8 gallons a minute, which drives up with the specs, 8.6, what the specs say. Let's see what we can get out of it under load. Running around 500 pounds of parasitic pressure right now. 1,000 pounds, still holding above 8. 2,000 pounds, still holding 6. Again, above 2,000 pounds, we really start to choke the system down. I think that was pretty consistent with our measurements that we did directly from the power beyond. Okay, we're hooked up to Johnny 5. Johnny 5 is rated at 17 gallon per minute. Let's see what we come up with here. All right, we're running uh, just under 5 right now at idle. And our temperature a little over 100. Looks like we're seeing 11 and a half. It's bouncing a little bit, but around 11 and a half there. 11 to 11 and a half. At first thought, we thought we were way off here. Correct, we did. Because um, the tractor says, the specs say 17 and a half gallons per minute for the pump, and we're only seeing 11, 11 and a half. Right, right. So what we looked up was the specs for the half inch couplers that we're testing through at the rear remote. And we determined on Parker's site, who's a major manufacturer of couplers, that um, they're only rated for 12 gallons a minute. We may be right at the spec of the couplers, like we uh, determined on the four series and the quarter inch couplers, possibly. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I guess our thought process is that these machines are designed to run larger implements that have a lot going on at once. So if we could put a second flow meter in here, we could get eight out of both couplers at the same time. Come on, and, Ken, you need to spring yeah. for another meter. Right. Well, I bought this one. Maybe you should buy the next one. <laughs> you know, I think we're going to go with this test right here and just say, no. now, I, really, I think that's what's going on here is we can only get 11 or 12 out of a single outlet. Um, but what that allows is multiple outlets to run at that at that rate right. for larger equipment. That's that's right. really what you need. Now, yeah. that's not going to help us run a electric motor at 15 GPM. No, we it's would not. have to have probably three-quarter inch hoses, three-quarter inch couplers right. to be and, able to get that, and a way to tap into the main hydraulic flow and not go through the remote like we are now because we're seeing some restriction there and with the hard lines. It we, would be interesting yeah. to see if the power beyond for a five series is three-quarter inch. Right, and it would be interesting to see if Deere actually specs when you get down into the specs if they actually spec gallons per minute per remote if they get that detailed. Probably not. So we can't really tell you if this meets specifications. We can tell you that one remote does not. But you know, I think it would be valuable to see what we get at the front. Ken, I was in the tractor. What did you see here? What we saw was at idle, when you started up, four gallons a minute, like yeah. we saw at the rear. At full throttle, we again saw the 11 gallons a minute. The only difference we saw is we had about 900 pounds of the parasitic pressure like we had seen. Okay in the other third functions that we had tested because Probably of the Probably because extra of extra couplers. Yeah, and, and, and we believe that the diverter, well, we're pretty sure that diverter, the, the diverter for this machine is in this plastic shroud here because there's electrical connections that run from the single point coupler up to the loader 
So in here is a diverter that dumps the dump and curl, just like an artillion diverter does or, or a summit diverter does. Um, so we are probably seeing a little bit of restriction there. So, but overall, we're seeing the same general findings that we did at the rear. Okay, Ken mentioned diverter. The 5E uses a diverter for your third function. Yeah, that's a factory install, yeah. The 5M and 5R actually have a true third function. Okay, good, good to so, know, yes. I'm not sure what else we can test here, Ken. I, we're not able to test the full flow because of couple right. of restrictions, hose size restrictions. Yeah, um, the, yeah. the whole tractor's plumbed in hard line, so it's hard to access any joints to plumb this in line. And this is another reason why this, this type of test is not really the average user's uh, thing to do. The pressure test is easy, but this is just a little bit you know, more advanced than the average user can do, plus the cost of the testing uh, equipment exactly, to do it. Exactly, it, it's, yeah. it's not easy. A lot of couplers, the, 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 the unit to do the test is expensive, but then all these couplers and hoses yes. that, that you've provided. We really yeah. want to thank you, thank Bolt-On Hooks for, for doing this. So in this episode, we've done the 3720, the 4052R, and the 5075E as best we can. Yes. Not real scientific here, but we've done the right. best we can. Yeah, right. for, uh, for two guys with a pressure gauge, I think we did pretty good. <laughs> or a, and only a one gauge. of them being kind of smart. The other one, well, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor, Tractor Time, Time with, with Tim. Tim.